welcome to video number 5 in our series Advanced IT Refreshers for Connoisseurs. My name is Doris Edwards and today I'm going to talk to you about how to use the VLOOKUP function to compare lists. I recommend that you watch tutorial number 4 of this series first. In that video I cover a more traditional VLOOKUP solution. I also show you how to attribute names to ranges of cells. If you don't have access to all of our videos, you might want to consider becoming a premium member. We would love to have you with us. Please visit rickistips.com for more free videos and the conditions for becoming a premium member. Inside this video I'm going to show you a real-life example on how to use VLOOKUP to compare lists, walk you through the creation process using the same real-life example, and share with you a neat formula that you can use over and over in combination with VLOOKUP. Let's start with the first point, the real-life example. Let's assume I'm a personnel manager. Under my jurisdiction are employees from the sales and marketing departments. In our department we have a list of employees and their salaries. Each person has a unique code which is listed in column A. The total salaries are listed in column D. At the end of every month I have to recalculate the total salary based on the employee's previous month's performance. This is because the total salary consists of a fixed amount in column B plus a commission. The commission is variable representing 10% of the monthly performance value. The monthly performance value is listed in column C. At the end of every month I received the latest performance values from head office. Unfortunately, this report is different to the one we use in the personnel department and this is because it's generated by another software system over which we have no control. In our example, the monthly report does not list employees in the same order. If I didn't use VLOOKUP, I would have to manually compare my own list and the monthly report copying and pasting the latest monthly performance values from one to the other. With VLOOKUP we can automate this process, save time and reduce errors. But there are two conditions. The first concerns the fact that both reports must share a unique value. In our example this is the employee code, a combination of a unique number and the name. The second condition is that this unique value must be positioned in the first column of the report we use for the lookup, in our case the monthly report. If these two conditions are met, we are ready for VLOOKUP. Let's see the result in the cells of column C, where we use this function. We have two types of result, a number and an NA error message. The error message is important, it tells us that VLOOKUP could not find the person in the monthly report. One can imagine many reasons why this should be the case. The employee has not sold anything during the previous month, he or she is absent, at a training course or sick, or has left the company. The error message is therefore an important trigger for us to investigate further, making sure that our own list is up to date at all times. Now that we have understood the context, we recreate this application from scratch. Let me walk you through it. The VLOOKUP function has four arguments. The first argument concerns the lookup value, that is the value that makes the connection between the two lists. In our example, this is the unique employee code in A3. The second argument defines the lookup range, also called the lookup database or table array. In our example, this is the monthly report. To be able to easily identify the lookup range, we have previously given it a name. In this example, the name Monthly Performance Report refers to cells A3 to B10. Note that we do not include the title columns in row 2. If you want to know more about attributing names to ranges of cells, please watch video number 4 in this series. To paste this name into the Table Array field, we press the keyboard key F3. This opens a window containing all the names available in this book. 
The third argument contains the column index number. Let's have a look at the lookup database, in our example the monthly report. We want to look up the monthly performance values. These are listed in column 2 of the lookup database. Finally, we enter false for range lookup. If we want VLOOKUP to compare lists, this is the correct logical value. And I copy the content to the other cells. Now let's check it out. Checks OK. Francoise doesn't figure in the latest monthly report, hence the error message. Here we have to investigate. And so on. Now we are ready for the third and last point, a neat formula that integrates VLOOKUP's error message. We position the cursor in cell D3. The result we wish to obtain here is base salary in cell B3 plus 10% of the monthly performance value in cell C3. If there is an error message in that cell, the base amount in cell B3 becomes the total salary. We start the formula with the IF function. For the logical test, true or false, we use the ISERROR function. ISERROR returns true if cell C3 contains an NA error message and false if cell C3 contains a number. The second argument is the result if the logical test is true, that is B3. And the third argument is the result if the logical test is false. It calculates 10% of the monthly performance value and adds it to the base amount. Take a careful note of the whole syntax including the two brackets at the end. Validate and copy to the other cells. And this brings us to the end of this video and also to the end of this series called Advanced IT Refreshers for Connoisseurs. Watch out for more great video refreshers. We continuously produce new series and new clips on many topics of interest to the busy professional. Take care and see you next time.